There's no shame in admitting that you've given up on a game. Not everyone wants to spend hours banging their head against the same enemy time and time again when they could be playing literally anything else instead. However, those who did stick it out and persevere through a rage quit scenario would find peace and enlightenment unlike any other. It's autumn 2019 and already we have seen more than enough examples of video game boss fights that have no doubt caused many a controller to defy gravity. Featuring multiple non-skippable introductory phases, ticking timers, massively overpowered moves with zero margin for error and the odd granddad crawling out of his grandson's neck. Because video games. My name is Rach, and these are the 10 video game bosses that made us rage quit. 2019 edition. Number 10, Dark Inferno, Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts optional bosses have a bit of a reputation about them as being easily the hardest encounters in their respective games. Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts, the mysterious figure in Birth by Sleep, and the lingering will in Kingdom Hearts 2 were this time joined by the Dark Inferno from Kingdom Hearts 3. Accessible only after beating the main story, Dark Inferno is a huge human-like heartless wielding two giant blue swords. It sports a ridiculous amount of health and the fight only gets harder as you slowly whittle down the 20 health bars. Even at max level, its special attacks will slice your health to pieces, requiring you to constantly balance between pressuring with your own attacks and blocking and countering the Inferno's relentless combos. Spamming the X button is simply not an option here, a method that may very well carry you through the whole of Kingdom Hearts' main story. Number 9. General Lothar, Wolfenstein Youngblood General Lothar is a pretty sick individual that you just cannot wait to kill. When your chance finally arrives at the conclusion of Wolfenstein Youngblood, it's in a final fight more than deserving of a place on this list. Lothar goes from assaulting you from the air wearing an incredibly durable jetpack to tanking up massively and just coming at you full force wearing a huge armor set, requiring huge amounts of power to shoot through his shields. Heaven help you if you're playing in the single player mode and your sister decides to ever go where you need her to go, constantly getting herself shot by either Lothar's one hit KO billets or just running off and getting tangled up with the dozens of goons dotted around the arena, refusing to help when you no doubt end up catching a stray shot yourself. The worst thing about this fight is if you're getting frustrated and decide you'd prefer to level up a bit before trying again, haha, <laughs> you can't! You are stuck in a never ending loop until either Lothar dies or you throw the game in the bin. Number 8. Pinstripe Potoru Crash Team Racing Nitro Fields Don Pinstripelli Potoroti featured briefly in the first Crash Bandicoot game as the fourth boss and he appears again in Crash Team Racing, maintaining his position as the fourth boss but dumping his SMG for something a little more explosive. Pinstripe will race ahead of you, employing clever use of shortcuts throughout the hot air skyway map, and constantly throwing an infinite supply of bowling bombs back at you. You'll need to constantly boost throughout the perilously floating racetrack full of twists and turns and plenty of opportunities for Pinstripe to overtake you and then throw a bomb in your face for good measure. The key is to boost ahead of him as early as possible and maintain this throughout the three laps. However, most of us were back there trailing behind him, eating bombs like popcorn every few seconds. Infuriating. Number 7. Chronica, Mortal Kombat 11 As you can probably guess, being the keeper of time, the architect of the destiny of the universe and the mother of the elder gods of life and death, Chronica is a bit of a baldy badass. She was a new character introduced with Mortal Kombat 11 and serves as the final boss to the game's story mode. Possessing the ability to bend time in such a way that we've never seen before in the Mortal Kombat universe, Chronica is a fearsome opponent that will not only bend the flow of time around you and her, but also summon multiple bodyguards from the past to attack you. She will teleport back and forth behind you relentlessly, shooting projectiles that she can sling back and forth with lightning fast trajectories. Trust me, we here at What Culture know a baldy badass when we see one. Number 6. Noah Prime, Astral Chain. Astral Chain has one of the most unique control schemes in all of gaming. Add to that a whole bunch of timing specific finishers and combo extenders and Astral Chain gives Devil May Cry 5 a run for its money as the best action game this generation. 
I say all this because come the time that you're fighting Project Noah, clearly Platinum wanted to design a boss that would test every single one of these skills at light speed with a foe that you can barely keep an eye on. Because Project Noah actively defies your lock-on. Just as you're about to line up a shot or deliver a full combo, off he goes to the other side of the screen again. You're left chugging health potions to get your vision back, spinning the camera to keep up, swapping weapons so that you're effective at a distance and up close. But for goodness sake, Astral Chain is an outstanding game, but this was just the one time when it felt like you were fighting the game itself more than just the boss. Number 5. Grand Inquisitor Vitalis A Plague Tale Innocence after a game primarily focused on a great story and character development, it's hard to imagine anything giving you much of a difficult time in A Plague's Tale Innocence. You'll shuffle through the heartbreaking story, mainly using stealth and puzzle solving to avoid confrontations, redirecting huge armies of rats to dispatch your enemies or uncover the path forward. The final boss is the Grand Inquisitor Vitalis, and you don't so much fight him as fight his own army of rats. Using young Hugo's abilities to control the rats, you'll need to slowly make your way through the infested cathedral, hurling clumps of brown rodents at Vitalis's white ones. Once you reach him, you'll then have to contend with his giant, big, swirling rat vortex video games and figure out how to finally sling at him right between the eyes. The most frustrating part about this fight is how little time you have to figure out the fight before the entire room is swarmed with rats. And once you're down, you'll need to repeat the whole first phase all over again. A theme which will come up again in this list shortly. Number 4. Super Tyrant Mr. X Resident Evil 2 Remake What could possibly be even more terrifying than being stalked around the halls of an infested police station by a 7 feet tall emotionless killing machine? Said killing machine growing an extra long spiky limb, setting himself on fire and trapping you inside a tiny fenced area will just about do it. By the time you come to face Super Tyrant Mr. X in Capcom's stellar remake of Resident Evil 2, you will have become well accustomed to his methods, these being generally to stomp around slowly and beat the crap out of Leon and Claire once he catches up to them. This time, however, he's armed, pun intended, with an insane reach, a charge with enough power to insta-kill you and a ridiculously large health pool. This final boss version has the added peril of being included within a timed section of the game requiring precision shooting and expert dodging in order to avoid the tyrant's deadly reach and take him down in time to sprint out of the exploding laboratory to safety. Number 3. Mr. Tomasi – Control Wielding supernatural abilities, Jesse Faden, director of the Federal Bureau of Control, fights to defeat and contain a deadly invading force called the Hiss. One hiss corrupted Mr. Tomasi is an optional boss fight in Remedy Entertainment's recent gravity bending third person shooter, and all in all, he sucks, man. Tomasi is easily the hardest boss in the entire game, being almost completely immune to your launch powers and dodging most bullets that you fire in his direction. You will continuously get caught in the rubble lying around the room and accosted by dozens of additional enemies that the boss summons into the fray. Notably, this includes an invisible demon that pops up to kill you in one hit, doing so through sheer proximity if you didn't act quick enough. Combined with the fact that the boss can easily take you down in two hits as well, this whole thing is just massively frustrating but incredibly satisfying to finally punch through. Number 2. The Dreamer and the Nightmare – Remnant from the Ashes Gunfire Games' spectacular hidden gem Remnant from the Ashes features impeccable gunplay mechanics from the likes of Borderlands and Destiny paired with addictive, difficult boss fights and RPG mechanics reminiscent of Dark Souls. It is a game where every death is a learning experience, and it takes a lot to become frustrated, especially when Remnant does not feature the Souls series' infamous loss of experience punishment. The final boss fight, however, will have you scrambling for that power switch in fits of anger. A two-phase boss fight, The Dreamer and the Nightmare is as much of a puzzle-solving exercise as it is a test of your reaction speed and the strength of your weapons. You will need to hone your skills and not let a single attack hit you, mainly in the second phase. The seemingly invincible nightmare requires you to dodge waves of ads and fatal projectile attacks as you wait to be teleported into a portal where killing enemies grants you a massive damage boost. 
Now this boost doesn't last long however, and the boss will still take a very long time to kill, not allowing for a single mistake throughout the entire grueling long fight. Number 1. Ishin the Sword Saint Sekiro Shadows Die Twice I mean, we could have made this entire list just full of Sekiro bosses, but Ishin truly takes the cake. Reincarnated through his grandson's neck, Ishin Ashina bursts forth ready to absolutely ruin players looking to finish their first playthrough of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Your main enemy throughout the entire endeavor has been Genichiro Ashina, who you will fight several times throughout the game. After first defeating Genichiro, the boss will then stab himself with the Black Mortal Blade, opening a gate to the underworld and bringing forth the reincarnation of his recently deceased grandfather, Ishin Ashina. Ishin then proceeds to assault us with three phases, each getting more terrifying than the next. What makes this fight so frustrating is its length. Dying to the second or even final phase of Ishin's attack sends you right back to the opening fight with Genichiro once again. And the tediousness of having to do the whole thing all over again for only just a few eventual moments of practice on the harder phases is enough to make anyone want to just go curl up and have a good cry. Which I kind of did. Worth it though. And that's our list. Thank you so much for watching. Any other bosses that we have missed, you know the drill. Add them in the comments below. Obviously, it's only October now, so God, God knows what the rest of 2019 has to offer. Whoa, don't know if my veins can handle it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Once again, my name has been Rach. We will see you tomorrow. Have an awesome day.